أيها السيدات والسادة أساتذتنا وعلماؤنا الكرام بمسك الختام نعطر حفلنا الذي ازدان وازداد تشريفا بحضوركم الكريم الأستاذ الدكتور حسام حمدي مدير جامعة الخليج الطبية بعجمان بالإمارات العربية المتحدة يلقي على حضراتكم محاضرة بعنوان Universities of the Future from Informative to Transformative هذا ويعد الأستاذ الدكتور حسام حمدي أحد أبرز أساتذة الجراحة والتعليم الطبي بالعديد من الجامعات العربية والدولية ويعتبر من العلماء المعروفين عالميا في مجال التعليم الطبي وجراحة الأطفال كما أنه يملك خبرة طويلة في القيادة الأكاديمية حيث تقلد منصب عميد كلية الطب بجامعة الخليج العربي بالبحرين في الفترة ما بين عام 1998 وحتى عام 2006 ثم نائبا لمدير جامعة الشارقة للكليات الطبية والصحية في الفترة ما بين عام 2006 وحتى عام 2014 وتقلد سيادته أيضا منصب مدير معهد القيادة في التعليم العالي بجامعة الشارقة ومستشار رئيس جامعة بيروت العربية وفي عام 2017 أصبح يشغل منصب مدير جامعة الخليج الطبية عجمان بدولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة هذا وقد ساهم الأستاذ الدكتور حسام حمدي في تطوير مناهج العديد من الكليات الطبية والصحية المرموقة بالعالم العربي مثل جامعة قناة السويس المصرية وجامعة الخليج العربي بالبحرين والكليات الطبية والصحية بجامعة الشارقة بالإمارات العربية المتحدة وله العديد من الأبحاث العلمية المنشورة في مجال التعليم الطبي وجراحات الأطفال وجدير بالذكر أن الأستاذ الدكتور حسام حمدي قد حصل على العديد من الجوائز التقديرية يأتي في صدارتها جائزة صاحب السمو الشيخ حمدان بن راشد آل مكتوم لأحسن كلية طب في العالم العربي عندما كان عميدا لكلية الطب جامعة الخليج العربي وجائزة صاحب السمو الشيخ خليفة بن زايد آل نهيان للأستاذ الجامعي المتميز وتقديرا لإسهاماته في تطوير التعليم الطبي على مستوى العالم منحته دولة فرنسا وسام فارس بدرجة السعفة الأكاديمية والذي يعد من أرقى الأوسمة الفرنسية التي تمنح لأساتذة الجامعات المتميزين عالميا أيها الحفل الكريم الآن نستمع إلى الأستاذ الدكتور حسام حمدي ومحاضرة بعنوان Universities of the Future from Informative to Transformative السلام عليكم أولا أحب أتقدم بجزيل الشكر والامتنان أستاذ دكتور أحمد زكي رئيس جامعة قناة السويس والأستاذة مجدة هاجرس نائب رئيس الجامعة لأن كما يعلم كثيرون أن ابن من أبناء جامعة قناة السويس وكنت من المجموعة الأولى التي اعتز إن إحنا ساهمنا بالذات في بناء كلية الطب منذ عام 78 فأشكركم وأشكر المؤتمر اليونج ريسيرشر وأشكر الدكتور محمد حسنين فاسيليتيتينج ماي برزنتيشن أوفر ذا last few days uh, I would like to start by a historical perspective because I think this is important and if we talk about Suez Canal University we always think of the founders of the medical school and how it has started in 1978, the late Professor Zuhair Norman and the late Professor Aismat Aizat. And I would like to thank my, my dear colleague, uh, Professor Sumaya Husni, for uh, borrowing from her presentation these two pictures. Actually, the Faculty of Medicine, Suez Canal University, is a hallmark of innovation in medical education in Egypt and in the region. 
And as you all know, hallmark means excellence, innovation. And this was, uh, at that time, 1978-79, what was developed at the Swiss Canadian University is, was something unique and different from what is was happening around that time. I was very pleased with the presentation, listening to the presentation of Dr. Muhammad Lutfi, because it fits well with what I'm going to talk about. If this is a, how the practices is happening now in healthcare, and not only in healthcare, in all other type of industries, engineering, business, and so on, the world has changed. So the question is, are we preparing our students in higher education, not only in medicine or health, but in other, in other uh, uh, domain of specialization, agriculture, science, and so on and so forth? Are the universities in this process of changes? Or we have to, to do something more? So, moving from this to just I want to show you, and maybe the, my colleagues from the College of Medicine, they, particularly the young generation, very few of the old generation will remember this document, which was the first curriculum document of the Suez Canal University, which I had the pleasure of binding it and developing it with my colleagues. And this is how it was, and the conceptual model, which was built around it, is based on starting from the health needs of the society, what the society needs, and then from that, defining how the graduate <coughs> or the physician who will be working uh, in the healthcare system, is he able to respond to the needs of the community or not? So even this model, which was developed in 1979, 1980, is what is happening now. Because we have to look all the time to what the community needs. And the community has changed as uh, uh, over the last 40 years. It has completely changed. So again, the question, are the universities preparing and changing what they are doing and giving. It's not about giving a course in this or that or to have uh, a technology here or there, but it's much more than that. And that's what, going, what I'm going to talk about it in my presentation, is how in the, the future of the university, university of the future, how we have to move from being just informative to transform it. So, what I would like to share with you is the university of the future and all the major paradigm shifts which should take, take place in higher education. Definitely the disruption and disruptive forces which took place due to COVID and other things which I'm going to uh, elaborate a little bit on them. Uh, whether before the COVID or during the COVID or after the COVID. So what are these implications? What are the implications of this changes on educational systems? Again, I've heard uh, Dr. Muhammad Lutfi in his presentation at the beginning. He mentioned we are moving to value-based healthcare. Value-based healthcare. And what is the meaning of that? Of course, research will be and is the cornerstone for quality, for innovation, and for the transformation. And you, the young researcher, 
we will be the one, you will be the one who are going to lead this innovation and transformation, not, not us. We may help you to find your way, but it's you who is going to develop the future of higher education in Egypt and in other parts of the world. Prediction of the future, very difficult. Is it a dream or reality? And what should we do? So let me start again in a bit uh, philosophical way by this French philosopher, Alain Badiou. And it's not only in 2005, but even Alain Badiou before that. Look at this. He described or an event, Hadith, has the power to rupture standard practices and approve knowledge disclosing heightened ability to think and act. Very interesting. The event. This could be in the personal life, in a country, in university, or globally. So COVID-19 is an event. And you can find that how this definition or how his interpretation of the event applies 100% to the COVID uh, pandemic. And they consider February 2020 is a point of no return to the educational system of the past. So it is not only about uh, we are using uh, online or uh, synchronous or synchronous but the whole system of education of the past before 2020 is in the process of changing and will continue to change. And, but the issue here is how fast these changes should take place. And the countries or the university which will not change as fast as possible will be left behind. So my argument, I start with another argument, again, that higher education programs, again, I read business, agriculture, engineering, medicine, nursing, pharmacy. It's about people, societies, and human interaction embedded in a rapidly changing social and work-related systems. So these are key words that all the programs, whatever they lead at the end, it influences the life of people and the societies, they, they, they are in it. And I do believe that medicine is a social science because it deals with human beings with their lives. But some people may say, what about engineering, business, economics, informatics? Are they social sciences? I believe, yes. You may come and say, social science, no, look at social sciences in a much broader sense. But the meaning also of this, that social sciences, should be also embedded in all type of education, medicine, again, engineering, and so on. And social sciences, which is the study of society, social relationship, people behaviors, it influences the world around us. This is one of the definition of social sciences. And when you look into at present, the accreditation bodies of international accreditation bodies of engineering, of business, of medicine, WFME, uh, ACPE, and others, you will find that the, they talk about outcome competencies. And all of them, they share several common competencies competency domain. 
So you find they all of have knowledge for practice. In all of them, your guide, they talk about teamwork, collaboration, communication. The issue of system sciences, the new sciences now is coming about system sciences. The data analysis and informatics, again, what was presented by Dr. Lutfi. Ethics and professionalism, problem solving, critical thinking, and so on. So the question, are we introducing these competencies? Are we teaching these competencies? Are we assessing these competencies? Are we changing our programs? So these are important questions, regardless of the speciality, because they are present in all other type of higher education. Although I am uh, a surgeon, as all of you may know, and the medical educationist, but I keep looking at other type of education and, and the top 11 engineering programs in the world, they have the same competencies. But faculty like me and like you, we don't usually have the habit of looking into journals which deals with education in our domains. You may, you may be familiar or you are reading regularly a journal in your specialty, Journal of uh, British Journal of Surgery or JAMA or but very few will be reading these journals which they are talking about how the medical education, how the business education, how the engineering education is changing. And I think uh, we should be, the faculty needs to, every now and then, to look into evidence and the science of education in their own domain. We are lacking this. So, when we talk about the big picture, we have to differentiate, well, if we are talking about competence, between the tools, like the knowledge and the skills for practice in a field of study for a profession, and the social needs and impact, fitness for purpose of the graduate. That's one of the definitions of quality, isn't it? Fitness for purpose. Of course, in engineering, they have to learn uh, physics and mathematics and uh, architecture and the same in medicine, anatomy, physiology. But these are tools, again, in order to uh, achieve the competencies. So it is not only about the technology. It is not only about how the curriculum it is designed. It is not about how many credit hours. It's not about how to teach and how to teach. Definitely all these are important, distance or face to face. The issue now after the COVID, it's not the distance and face to face only, but it's the major changes and transformation. It is actually more about this complex relation between education and the systems around them. And it is a wicked problem, wicked uh, uh, We have to understand that any educational program or medical college, it is inseparable from, the, from its system. And in medicine, it is a healthcare system which is changing. So you are, there are different systems which are affecting what we are doing in, in, a, in an educational or in a, uh, uh, institution, or whether a college or university. You have the social and cultural systems, you have economic systems, you have political systems. All of this influence the education. So the disruptive forces which happen are too many. So you have the, definitely COVID, but COVID has accelerated what was already present. 
there is a huge advances in the medical knowledge in all fields of sciences. New technology, of course, developed before COVID, during and will continue to be developed. The demography of the population is changing, more elders, more chronic diseases. The patients now are better educated. Uh, social media, Google, everyone now is expert in uh, COVID. The informatics and big data analytics, how, how this should be introduced and embedded in uh, the educational programs, not in computer science, engineering, no, in medicine, in business, in social sciences. So, the new academic healthcare is also changing in addition to all this technology, but there is also an evolving uh, system which is the academic healthcare centers or systems. It's when academia and healthcare, academia, education, and research are linked with the healthcare and it goes through different stages of development. So you cannot separate the education and research from the practice and the system related to it. Again, I repeat, this applies to business, it applies to engineering, it applies to uh, uh, agriculture and so on. So <laughs> the training of students will be in all healthcare or other related facilities in the community, whether it is public or private. And students will be embedded very early or they should be embedded very early in the workplace, not near the end of the program. And this needs major organizational culture change. Now, the second major reforms which I'm talking about is about competency-based education. How we should be moving. Actually, we have been moving for many years, but I'm not sure in other uh, educational programs are moving the same, in the same way like in, in medicine and healthcare. Moving from course-based to competency-based moving from how much the graduate knows to how the graduate, what is the graduate is able to do. It's not about how many credits and accumulating credits, but are they fit for purpose or not? So, I am a big believer in the importance of embedding the learner in the workplace. And the uh, early you do that, they will start to learn the language of the of uh, uh, of the of the, learn, uh, of the practitioners because they, they are like the engineers who are working. This is what they call it, what the community needs, what the market needs. بنتكلم كثيرا عن احتياجات سوق العمل الطلاب مش هيعرفوا سوق العمل ازاي الا لو هم غرسوا في سوق العمل في مرحله مبكره ولكن طبعا بحسابات معينه This is a traditional 100 years old curriculum model where you give in the first two years basic science and then you give applied sciences in another two years or three years. A two pillars model. And still it existed now. Kursat al taught of Sanawat al-Ula, kullaha basic. Wubadin al application later on, wahyana subad al kulyat and dohom, what's called the capstone. Wudipti gim kan fisana al akhira min al dras. Gamma Khanat Suez Canal University was one of the first. It was the first in Egypt when we developed this curriculum model. 
of to develop integration between the basic medical sciences and the clinical sciences with a spiral approach. Still till now, it is what's happening in the medical school as a concept. But gradually we have learned that sometimes it's difficult, this line of demarcation between them, that's why they have to interdigitate and we start to move them and link them and integrate very early. Now, this is the model which I am developing and I have developed it. And you can see this four pillars model is when you have the basic science, the clinical science, systems and social sciences, research and innovation, new conferences based on that. It's one of the pillars. Research has to, to be embedded as a culture in the institution. And what is cutting across all this is technology and data sciences, the big data, the precision medicine, again, which uh, Dr. Lutfi was talking about it. And now you can see there is another level, which is called the interestability. Can I trust the graduate? So the third change is that the faculty will change. The faculty need to change from their role now as information giver to a facilitator of learning, of learning. They are role model, experts, and an innovator. They may be faculty track system. I have developed this here to have a, a, a faculty track of research. 80% of their time, they are doing research to come up with significant research. And those in education, they do research. And the clinical, they do also research. But the weight can vary, or the KPIs can vary between each track. So even I'm talking about to differentiate between teaching load and the educational load, which is more comprehensive. The students have changed. They are tech natives. They are used to distance learning even before the COVID. Students and faculty are working in teams. Students from different medicine, with nursing, with pharmacy, even with business, they can be learning things and working sometimes together, the interprofessional education. And students from year, year one should be close to the workplace. And research and innovation should be integral to, to the students' learning experience very early. Again, the university and the colleges will change. Uh, when I, I come sometimes with this, people get frightened. Uh, the departments, the departments. Uh, I, I, I foresee that the departments, they may exist, but they are not going to be with the same uh, way of having strong department with very rigid walls. Again, the Suez Canal University College of Medicine was one of the first to break the walls of the departments. I know till now we have only three departments in the College of Medicine, part of basic medical sciences, department of uh, uh, community medicine, population health, and Department of Clinical Sciences. The same principle can apply to others, because now we are talking about research on innovation, ethics and professionalism, and so on and so forth. So we have to imagine there will be a new organizational structure in the future. The new technology enhanced workplace and educational environment. This another major reform. Uh, it will enhance, improve the practice, the technology, but definitely it will not re replace the doctor or the pharmacist, but it will make the, the job better. So all this AI, machine learning, robotics, data analytics, innovation and entrepreneurship is becoming part of all programs including medicine. So 
they are uh, in Egypt there is a wonderful experience which is happening which is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank because it, it has provided it is providing a lot of resources to all to all the universities it's a fantastic uh, uh, initiative uh, in Egypt the communication as you all know is becoming now on the computer not only the computer on the mobile phone the library the traditional library which we have it is going to disappear it will be more like a Starbucks, 24 hours, seven days, because you have the electronic library. You are carrying the library on your mobile. The same with all the analytics related to educational quality assurance. The university management system, which are happening now. The learning environment will be changing. As you can see, it's more of a very uh, small groups learning everywhere in the university they work together the classroom this is the learning environment is completely different artificial intelligence and simulation we have developed something called virtual patient learning uh, quick. Good morning, Doctor. Virtual Patient Learning, VPL, is an online simulation system based on artificial intelligence and pre-recorded movies in which the learner plays the role of a physician who confronts a simulated patient. The patient in the scenario is played by a professional actor who is trained to simulate variable moods, attitudes, and emotional responses through verbal and nonverbal communication. Uh, actually, this VPL now, it is uh, available in Egypt and I think around 2,000 faculty in medical schools have access to it and it is provided by the uh, no Egyptian Knowledge Bank. So this is a very high fidelity simulation which capture even psychological simulation and emotion. The assessment system, Nozum Limtahanat, will change. There will be more workplace-based assessment. We'll be capturing uh, several points of performance, formative and summative, to ensure that uh, the graduate is entrustable. We are using portfolio now, electronic portfolio, to capture all these points. Because it is not, again, uh, uh, USB. Uh, how to measure quality? We need new metrics for that. Why? Because the community will ask, can I trust him or her? I don't care to Luli Nohoa Wahid A Walla Wahid is a infill mate. Well I can become an an trustworthiness and intrustable professional activities. And I talk Hayasal Kaman Tahir Bach. It's impossible that now we are using still a credit system, a credit hour system, which was discovered in the 19th century and is influencing us till now. It is based on time where it should be replaced by trust. So the accreditation bodies need to reform their standard, how they measure distance and blended learning. مسألة الغياب والحضور أصبحت محتاجة لإعادة نظر. We need evidence-based strategic planning. It is very important. لازم في الجامعات يبقى في multidisciplinary think tanks. يدعو رؤى. They should be flexible educational system. Research is embedded again, as I've said, from year one. 
there should be risk management culture and policies for that. Risk management, makhater, zay al-binuk. There will be new strategic planning advisory boards, not only the university council, advisory boards in the universities. دي تغيرات كبيرة المفروض إنها تحصل في تشكيل الجامعات. So what is needed? We need transformative quality assurance systems. And as I said before, the accreditation bodies can play an important role in that. The leadership and faculty development programs to lead these changes. Al-Qiyadat. We need visionary transformative leadership. And I think that as it happens in Egypt, the universities should be able to do that. Where faculty transformative leadership, visionary leadership, uh, need to be really will guide the future of uh, health of education and university of the future. I thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. Okay. Shukran lahadatak, Dr. Hussain. I'd like to thank you for your informative talk uh, about university of the future, from informative to transformative. And I would like to thank you. How I would like to ask you, how do you estimate the current situation in Egypt, in Egyptian university? Are are they in the right way to transform? Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, what is happening in Egypt is a revolution. Uh, as I've said, uh, COVID has accelerated many things, but we we still need, in my opinion, to have a different look from what we are used to do. Even the organization of the universities, that's why the legislative, the قوانين ويجب أن تتغير بحيث تسمح ل ل لهذا التصارع الكبير لان احيانا القوانين بت 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 يعني بتلمت هذه التغيرات وانا اعتقد ان وزاره التعليم العالي ومنظومه التعليم بتنظر في ذلك ولكن الجامعات يجب ان تقود ذلك وتتحرر من كثير من القيود التي توضع عليها وجامعه قناه السويس بالذات كانت اما تشوف في سنه 80 اما بدانا او 79 كانوا الجامعات الاخرى بتنظر لنا ايه 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 الكلام اللي احنا بنقوله ده ولكن اه اتحطت نظم جديده اتحطت اه لوائح جديده غيرت حاجات كثيره فعشان كده جامعه قناه السويس رائده في الانوفيشن وان شاء الله تستمر في قياده التطوير في التعليم العالي باذن الله. شكرا لحضرتك دكتور حضرتك برضو اعتقد ان الفرصه دلوقتي افضل في عصر الكورونا واللوك داون الاجباري واللي الناس بتضطر تتعلم عن بعد هل ده هيبقى ليه تاثير افضل او هيسرع الريت اللي اللي ممكن الجامعات فيه تتحول؟ انا بعتقد انه هيسرع الريت اند ات از وزي ما حصل حاجات كثيره اتغيرت وزي ما قلت فبراير 2020 is a date of no return. لن نرجع إلى النظام قبل الكورونا. فبعد حتى ما تروح الكورونا أما تتحكم فيها النظم هتختلف. فهي مش عشان الكورونا الدنيا اتغيرت وهتستمر في التغيير بتصارع رهيب ويجب أن نلحق ذلك وأن نكون جزء منه. within the context of the Egyptian context لأن برضو خصوصية المجتمع وخصوصيتنا كدولة دي مهمة جدا وأخذها في الاعتبار لكن الدنيا هتتغير وانتم اللي هتقودوا هذا التغيير ففيل فري انكم تغيروا وبدعم مش هقول كبار السن ولكن السينيور اللي اللي شفنا من البدايه ازاي كان التغيير وانتم اللي هتعملوا التغيير الان ان شاء الله. شكرا شكرا لحضرتك دكتور حسام انا بشكر حضرتك على التوك المفيد والانفورماتيف اللي حضرتك قدمته 
ونبدا دلوقتي ان شاء الله بريك صغير كده ونبدا السيشن التفاعليه بتاعتنا ندعو حضرات الناس الحضور كلهم اللينكات موجوده على الموقع بتاع المؤتمر وهنعمل لها هعمل لها دلوقتي ببلش مره ثانيه في عندنا دلوقتي سيشن بقى كمان خمس دقائق هيبدا ست سيشن تفاعليه للمؤتمر شكرا لحضراتكم شكرا لدكتور حسام دكتور محمود دكتور محمد صالح على وجودكم معانا في مؤتمر شباب الباحثين الثامن ومستقبليه ما بعد جائحه كورونا شكرا الف شكر